What's going on, y'all, and happy Thanksgiving. Today is a hawk day. No fancy montage. I did spend an entire live stream um, testing him, talking with my chat and other content creators on builds, how good he is, things like that. So I have a good feel of at least first day impressions, actually playtesting him, giving him some solid gear and molas. And I'll let you guys know, is he worth your hardened bookmarks, depending on units that are coming up soon, depending on your play style, and things like that. Um, we'll go and look at his stats, gear recommendations, mola priority, all the good stuff. And then hopefully in the background, I got some footage, you know, just to fill the void while we talk about Zahawk overall. Because um, we did have some pretty fun matches today with him. Now, first things first, let's go ahead and talk about his strengths and a little bit about playstyle differences um, with Zahawk. He is an Earth Warrior, of course, guys, and the main selling points are, of course, his 50% hit chance and 50% crit chance on skill 3, 50% crit chance on skill 1. And the barrier, this is like the least uh, impressive part of the kit overall. I think in my entire day of testing, guys, um, I casted this zero times, maybe once in like 10 matches or so. It'll come up eventually, um, here and there, depending on the comp you run, if you build them a little bit tankier and things like that. But overall, the main selling points to me, the skill 3 and skill 1. The skill 1 especially, guys... Hit so dang hard. You can compare it similar to Ice Kisei, the multipliers overall. There's a little bit, there's some slight differences with it. But the main thing everyone was saying yesterday, right? Or when the patch preview hit is we need to wait for the multipliers. Of course, we have to wait for the multipliers on every damage unit. And let me just say, guys, that patch preview video where the Zahawk hit the Violet for like, I think it hit it for like 8,000, did not do it justice. Smilegate definitely gave him some very high multipliers. If you don't know what that means, it's just how much damage he does. And the skill 3 and the skill 1 hit like a truck. Violets, Remnant Violets, they, a lot of times, if they're not protected by an FCC, or let's say a Fallen Cecilia, a Crimson Armin, an Aureus, or something, barriers, they're dead, like just guaranteed dead, no injury needed. Now, if they are behind a tank and you have attack up, chances are they still die given that you have some solid gear, okay? We'll go over gear a little bit later in the video, but I want to hammer home the fact that his damage is the real deal, guys. They, they Smilegate definitely gave him enough to feel like his, you know, his squishiness, even though he does have a skill 3 um, invincibility, like he's high impact, so we want to play more aggressive overall. Now... I opted for speed pen. Let's go ahead and show the stats real fast of my gear. Keep in mind, guys, if you didn't watch the patch preview, we don't need that much crit chance on him, right? The fact that he gets 50% means we only need 50% crit chance base um, or 50% chance on the stat sheet. And since he has 27% crit after fully awakened, uh, we only need 23% from gear. So I'm actually 5% over capped. I didn't want to gem, um, like I could take this off, but in case I swap this to another unit, I'll leave crit chance on here. A lot of y'all, you may have a lot of crit chance scattered about, but the fact that he gets 50% crit on both S1 and S3 means gearing him compared to a unit like Spirit Eye Selene, who I just made a video on where I I told y'all if you didn't have insane gear, maybe avoid pulling her for now. So Hawk, I think a lot of y'all, you may not be able to push as much stats like here, um, depending on the crit damage, attack, and speed, but you'll still be able to build him pretty nicely and then if you can speed boost him like with an Amelia or something even better it's just he's so much easier to gear than um, a lot of other units because of that massive amount of crit chance you add on top of that the insane multiplier small small gate gave him and I think a lot of y'all that like these kind of units just hit hard play aggressive um, and do so much damage that your opponent can't recover I think you will really really enjoy the hawk so those are the strengths I we, we can talk about the weaknesses here in a second um, but yeah, I really recommend, guys. Now hold off. Don't go summoning just yet. I have a few more things to say. But he is definitely a feel-good unit. Um, he is not a must-have for two reasons. One, because he's not limited. And two, because there's other single-target damage dealers that will have other pros and cons, right? If we just look at strong single-target damage dealers, Rimuru, who just came out, is insanely good. Has a lot of utility as well. Kisei, who is very similar to Zahawk, especially the skill 1. But I actually think Zahawk has a lot of bonuses or has a major edge over Kisei because of the hit chance. Uh, meaning he can hit not just his opposite element or his advantageous element. He can hit like fire units where Kisei is very, struggles very much versus ice units. And uh, of course, we can also hit dodge units. Um, furthermore, I think the last weakness is just the mainly it's the playstyle difference for me guys i couldn't take full advantage because my entire comps were more tanky in nature i like to run soivers i like to run knights not because i want to fall asleep but because that's kind of what the game gave me in terms of gearing if you guys have a lot of high damage high speed gear and you like drafting those um 
not necessarily full on cleave, but hyper aggressive comps. I think Zahawk will be a perfect fit for you guys when the the um, scenario rises. And the fact that he has 50% hit chance means we can just bring him versus a lot of these fire units versus a lot of any unit pretty much. Tackle on top of its symbol, which we'll talk about artifact selection here soon. Um, we can hit even Remnant Violets. We can even hit Milims, who have the 20% hit chance plus being fire. It doesn't matter, Zahawk will do a ton, a ton of damage despite stealth, despite being uh, opposite elements. So, I think, let's go ahead and just talk briefly before I show the gear and then we'll, we'll talk about um, stats and molas and all that good stuff. Long story short, should you pull for Zahawk? If you have a lot of bookmarks, guys, if you already have Fairytale Tenebria, if you like the aggressive play style, if you like his looks, I think he's a strong, strong unit. But, he is not must-have, so... If you don't have Fairy Tail Tenebria and you're light on bookmark, let's say you're more free to play, hold off on him. If you also are a tankier player, a slower player, and you don't think you can have enough high damage, high speed gear to make him work, and keep in mind, guys, the 50% crit chance means a lot of y'all will be able to give him some kind of stats, but if he doesn't fit, uh, fit your play style, he is mostly a PvP unit, I would guess. Um... Because the injury, of course, is not going to be very... It's not good in PvE. Most bosses are immune to it. Um, he's... Let's talk just strictly PvP for now. Maybe there'll, there'll be some PvE content that he can do. But definitely he won't be a um, must-have there either. So... If you don't have Fairy Tail and you are free to play and he doesn't fit your play style hold off save your bookmarks he's not limited you can get him later also his artifact is not must have either so you can chill on that uh it's kind of like a different sort of border coin so far even zahawk doesn't seem he doesn't really need it uh either the people that do like his looks the people that do play hyper aggressive the people that have bookmarks he is a solid solid unit smilegate definitely designed him well and those of you that have trouble fighting violets remnant violets even Milims and things like that, I think you should pull for him if you don't have a lot of single target strong damage dealers. And remember, he has a lot of edges or a lot of uh, benefits, pros, compared to uh, other single target damage dealers that I just mentioned. So, yeah, guys, I think definitely consider the pros and cons. It's really just the fairy tale Tenebria people that need to save if you're free to play. Totally get it. Um, but I think a lot of people should really look into getting Zahawk if you need a strong single target damage dealer. Now, let's go ahead and look at his gear. I opted for speed pen like I mentioned. However, guys, please let me know in the comments below if anyone tried out a bruiser build. That's what I'm going to test this week after the hunt events and after Thanksgiving ends. I didn't want to regear my entire account. Um, but uh, yeah, I wanted to um, try a more bruiser build, possibly even a counter build. Because like I mentioned, the skill one hits so hard, guys. If we can give him some tankiness after the skill three invincibility, if we can give him like a little bit of survivability potentially revive and stuff anyone that hits him if he's countering on these skill ones it can do a ton a ton of damage but overall the speed pen is very very effective if you are an aggressive player and even someone like me who plays a lot slower with knights he didn't fit my playstyle at all but i could tell he was the real deal and he won me some he won me a lot of matches despite having that negative synergy in uh play style real fast guys um i was watching elf mage earlier i'll go in and write on the screen um elf mage who is a good friend of mine he is the type of player i'm talking about check him out on twitch if you want to see what kind of play style he runs but he plays hyper aggressive and he made the hawk look so good and even for me someone that plays a lot tankier a lot slower like i said i could tell Zahawk the he just works the damage the ease of gear uh speed pen would be my first recommendation guys so let me go ahead and show the stats right here remember you only need 50 percent crit chance so things like this where i regen for crit chance i would have not needed so start looking out guys for pen set gear and speed set gear with low crit chance you will still need 23 percent crit from gear but after that go for speed crit damage and attack if you're going for the glass cannon build which i think is just even if it's not the best for you, it's a strong build regardless, so keep an eye out for that. those kind of stat lines. Remember too, guys, I keep mentioning even the Spirit Isolene video, crafting event is coming up. So I would highly, highly recommend crafting a either pen set ring, boots, or neck. And if it's necklace, make sure it's crit damage, guys. Crit chance, you'll hear a lot of players say is the best. You might have heard me say it's very good. It's the most stat efficient. However, more and more units are coming out like Zahawk like Spirit Eye Selene that have crit imprints, like Apoc, Ravi, and Zahawk who have crit built in, and the crit chance neck will overcap us, meaning it's not great. And for Zahawk especially, we want crit damage. So crit damage is still super, super strong, and in some cases even better, even if it's a little less stat efficient than a crit chance neck. So um, pen set neck, crit damage main stat, 
Speed boots on penetration set, attack percent ring on penetration set. Make sure it's right side gear. I have a video on it, guys, but this is not what this video is about. So just get some pen set crafted real soon with this crafting event, okay? Especially if you play some PvP. Um, last but not least, I was going to talk about Mola Priority. Skill 3 and Skill 1, guys, I you pretty much need to max. He's a damage dealer, and they both hit so hard, you want to max them guaranteed. Now, a lot of y'all may ask, Car, I heard the... Um, the turns was changed apparently in the korea video in the korean um showcase it is accurate and there was a little bit of a mistranslation in the english one so it is five turns four turns after cooldown meaning we're not going to really be cycling back to this too much so honestly we're just going for the damage the skill one same thing just go for damage if you're light on molas get as many as you can the order doesn't matter the barrier i honestly who cares if you really like him and he you do cast this occasionally max out it eventually but it's mainly just the skill one and skill three as for artifact selection, I really enjoy Symbol of Unity, but since this is such a high demand artifact, we may want it on our Fire Charlotte or another unit. Um, other artifact selections could be things like, let's go ahead and just open up the artifact journal here, and we'll wrap things up. But so far, I've heard um, Draco Plate, since he is a warrior, always good. Gives some mitigation, especially if you build a little bit tankier. The extra crit damage is nice. I think for aggressive players, Merciless Glen, unfortunately, I don't have this. Um, I think I sold mine on accident when it was bad, but Merciless Glen, very, very, very nice. Single, he's all single target, and we get a big damage boost plus combat readiness. Um, honestly, if you guys are OG players, you can run Portrait or Tonfa, but Portrait of the Saviors is always good, right? Essentially, we just want damage on him. Um, if you really want to cater him to only anti-evasion and you don't have symbol or symbols on someone else, you can run something like Oath Key, I guess. But I would really suggest, guys, going for damage. Anything you have that has damage, I think will work fine. But until you know what you want, try symbol, and that'll give you the options to just hit pretty much everything. Fire units, all dodge units, it covers everything, and the Hawk's damage is so good. It just really works well, all right? So that'd be my recommendations, guys. Let me know how he works out for you. And I think most of y'all, unless you're free to play in saving, especially if you play aggressive, should consider picking up Zahawk. He's one of the... He's just super, super good. Kudos to Smilegate for giving him the damage he needs. And the injury, guys. I didn't even mention the injury because most of the time he's just killing units. But even versus tanking players, the injury is super significant. 35% will just completely, completely devastate units that do end up surviving his massive damage. All right? All right. Guys, I got a Thanksgiving dinner to catch. But thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out, everybody.